Hello and welcome to Danny's Dungeon. I'm Danny and I'm here to reveal the movie magic behind some of my favorite horror movies and special effects makeups. If you want a glimpse through my eyes as a special effects makeup artist into the madness and the minds that created some of the most iconic movie makeups, stay tuned if you dare. <laughs> <laughs> On this episode of The Dungeon, I'm unwrapping everyone's favorite Christmas hating creature. The, 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 the Grinch. The Grinch. Yes, The Grinch. It is my favorite Christmas movie. It's my favorite movie of all time. It's my favorite makeup. I remember the day that I went to go see this movie at the movie theater with my grandfather on Christmas Day, and it has had a chokehold on me ever since. I have seen that movie hands down the most in my whole life um, over any other movie, and that's kind of saying a lot considering Harry Potter exists. This makeup is done by my all-time favorite special effects makeup artist, Rick Baker. Rick Baker not only holds the record for nominations for Academy Awards for hair and makeup. He also holds a record for the most wins. Not only that, he was also awarded with the first ever Academy Award for hair, for hair and makeup. Um, and he won that for American Werewolf in London, which I'm sure I will talk about eventually on this podcast. Anyways, back to the Grinch. The makeup that we see in the film is almost an exact replica of what Rick Baker presented to the director and the producers the first time ever. That was the first makeup they ever saw, and they absolutely hated it. And they were extremely worried that Jim Carrey's likeness was gonna be covered up by all the hair, all the makeup, all the prosthetics, and they immediately said, absolutely not, back to the drawing board. So Rick Baker and his team did just that, and they presented, um, presented the director and producers with about six other test makeups. They decided on one of them and at the very last minute decided to go back to the original makeup. Unfortunately, with a very small amount of time, they did not have the ability to do a test makeup on Jim Carrey. So the only makeup that had ever been tested was on Rick Baker himself. Rick Baker has a habit of doing makeup applications on himself when he creates certain characters, just so he knows the type of torture the actor's going through um, and to make sure it's it's bearable in, in a way. I think that's really important. If you are applying special effects, you should have them applied to you. It's extremely taxing mentally Everyone thinks it's always really cool, like, oh, that's so cool, I wanna get prosthetics, put on me, put that on me, glue that to my face. It's all fun and games until you have to wear a prosthetic for eight hours a day and for months on end. Not only taxing for the actors, but it's emotionally exhausting for the artists that have to apply these makeups and keep them touched up. Um, and that really showed on the Grinch. Within two weeks of production, Jim Carrey was literally being a Grinch and being nasty to cast and crew to the point that the individual that applied his makeup, his name was Kazuhiro, he asked the director for some time away to kind of readjust his mental state and just to take some time away and, and give his brain a little bit of a rest. During that time that Kazu was away, Jim Carrey received some training from a CIA agent. They hired this agent to essentially teach Jim Carrey how to withstand being tortured. Wearing prosthetics and being an actor that has to wear prosthetics is definitely not for faint of the heart, um, for faint of heart. Uh, it's also really kind of emotionally and mentally taxing to be an artist that has to kind of put up with the people that are in these makeups, it looks a lot easier, easier than it is. Um, and I think one of the funniest things that the CIA agent told Jim Carrey was that he should do anything that helped. And one of those things that helped Jim Carrey was smoking cigarettes. So for the duration of the filming of The Grinch, Jim Carrey picked up a smoking habit and I can't help but imagine him on an extra grinchy day just like fully costumed and outside smoking a cigarette 
I would pay to see that picture. I think that's an absolutely hilarious thought. After everything settled on set with Carrie's anger and Kazu's mental health, Carrie did request Kazu's return. Um, and Jim apparently was easier to work with after getting torture training. <laughs> I think it's also worth being said that Kazu did have to seek therapy after uh, wrapping the Grinch. Um, he also stepped away from Hollywood as it was extremely detrimental to his mental health. Um, and being in the film industry is not for the faint of heart. It is definitely not easy mentally or emotionally to work on sets and work with actors and work on sets that have big budgets or really serious time crunches. So let's break down the makeup that almost stole the production and caused big Grinchy moods all over set. So this makeup consists of bald capping Jim Carrey, a two-piece facial prosthetic that leaves out his bottom lip and chin, scalera contacts, and dental appliances on the top and bottom teeth, wigs, hair pieces, and clearly costuming from fingertips to his toes. After each section of the makeup application, Carrie would get a break. According to Jim Carrey, the makeup took about eight hours to apply, and according to Rick Baker, it took about two and a half. Um, and I think I'm going to be going with Rick Baker on this one. I can't imagine any makeup taking eight hours to apply. Um, so I think that's kind of funny, the difference in their timing. The initial application of a special effects makeup is less than half of the job. A majority of your work is coming from touch-ups and last looks. Kazu essentially had to mobilize his makeup trailer onto his body so he could always have any product or makeup tool that he needed. At the end of the day, his tool belts weighed around 100 pounds, which I think is astronomical. I can identify with wearing many belts. If you've ever seen me on set or worked with me on set, you've seen me wearing my belt of tools along with another belt filled with products to touch up. But I can't even imagine 100 pounds. That is just unbelievable to me. So I think Kazu really killed it and I hope that he is doing well. Um, and before I move on to any of the other makeups throughout the, the movie, I, I think it's important to address how amazing Jim Carrey is at creature acting. Um, creature acting is, is not something typically done by regular actors. Actual creature actors are brought in. They act more, um, they speak more with their bodies than they do their mouths um, or their small facial um, articulations like regular actors do. But I think Jim Carrey is definitely an exception to that rule considering that his physical humor is so over the top as are his facial expressions. So I think he did a really beautiful job just embodying the Grinch, which is extremely rare. Other very significant makeups in the movie are obviously all the Who's. I think the noses and the ears and how each nose and each set of ears are so tailored to each person's anatomy. Um, I think the sculpting was done really beautiful on those and, and how they all look so different from each other. I also love the addition of the, the front teeth pieces that they all wear. It's a very good reminder that these sweet little creatures are not human and they are in fact Who's. So I think that's a really, a really perfect reminder. And I, I really don't have anything bad to say about any of the makeups in, in the movie. I love the costuming, I love the hair, I love the set design, the prop design. It all is just so beautifully stylized and so Dr. Seuss. There are two animatronics in the movie. The first one is Baby Grinch, and I think he is so cute and realistic and lifelike. He is also made out of foam latex. Um, he's mounted on a metal pipe with a wooden base and is articulated with animatronics and he just turned out so cool and so lifelike, so I think he's a really cool animatronic. Another one was Max the Dog. Max the Dog was played by six different dogs, 
each one wore a headpiece that had kind of little ear extensions that made them all look the same. Um, and they did utilize an animatronic dog throughout some of the scenes as well. I recently watched The Grinch and I was kind of looking for the animatronic dog and I couldn't really find them. So uh, I think they did a really beautiful job working that into the scenes. Overall, I'm clearly obsessed with this movie and I have nothing bad to say about the, the makeup or how it was stylized. Um, but when asked, I think the crew would have something much different to say and it's quoted that they were asked if they would do it again and they said absolutely not, which I don't blame them. It seems like a, a psychological roller coaster from start to finish and I have nothing bad to say about it, but I can't imagine the nightmares that they had to deal with on set. So that is it for this episode of The Dungeon. On the next episode, we are going to be interviewing the mastermind behind the meat bomb. Super stoked about it. Make sure that you tune in. Also, I wanted to tell you to sound off in the comments. Tell me what you want me to dissect in the dungeon next year. Um, I have a few ideas, but I also want to hear what you guys would like to see. So I'll see you next time.